In the 15th century, when Jonathan Gutenberg patented his famous printing press, the second book ever produced on the new technology was an ancient Greek textbook on dreaming. Throughout the history of known civilization, humans have been fascinated, in some way, shape, or form, with dreams. As we approach a new stage in our evolution, mankind begins to look inward in hopes of understanding what dreams truly mean. The International Association for the Study of Dreams is a non-profit organization dedicated to enriching general awareness of dreams as a source of knowledge and guidance. By the way, when I dream in my dreams, I'm always me. And I think it's because I discovered who I am. Founded in 1984, the IASD now holds representative membership from over 30 countries and is the only organization of its type in the world. I'm always delighted when people come to the International Association for the Study of Dreams. I think that our organization has a great deal to offer people from a variety of backgrounds, and I think that uh, it has a richness of membership coming from many, many perspectives. It's really a wonder that we all get along so well together and learn from each other. I got a lot of comfort going into the dream world. So, uh, you know, and it's also what made me come here that I found this uh, association. I couldn't believe that, you know, all those studies, I could get so many answers because I was always doing all this stuff on my own. In the summer of 2009, I attended my first Association for the Study of Dreams conference. It was there that I met and interviewed 16 of the top authorities in the field of dream study. These interviews led to the creation of my full-length documentary, The Dream Mystery in American Teen Search for Dream Elders, as well as the creation of this series. Decades of research and thousands of personal dream case studies have yielded hundreds of commonalities in dreams in effect, showing a specific language of dreaming. A dream about falling from the sky can be interpreted as succumbing to sexual desire, failing in a business venture, or as a warning not to book an airplane ticket. <laughs> There's evidence that dreams may make a greater impact on behavior than waking thoughts because of their dramatic nature and their openness to a motivated interpretation. And over the years, I have seen how my own dreams often reflect my own doctrinal compliance. In other words, my eagerness to dream an imagery that conforms to my personal myths. The whole aspect of dreams that has to do with sorting through personal psychology, uh, 
uh, learning about one's complexes, the place where one is entangled in one way or another with parents, ancestors, with the culture, with history. Um, and so there's a lot of valuable therapeutic work where you can learn a lot about yourself from dreams. I've learned that it's a universal language that all people speak it and all people are interested in dreams, their own as well as other people's. I've learned that it really is the common language. Um, it's the sense of sight. And so it's the images that we create and produce and those come through in our dreams. And so that becomes then the, the universal language for reasoners. Um, I've learned that it gives dignity and hope to the evolution of the species, which I find great satisfaction and um, encouragement from. As more and more individuals look to their dreams to better understand themselves, great minds come together to help decipher these nightly experiences that have always fascinated humanity.